So let us start discussing the clinical features. Now when it comes to clinical features, as I have told you, I particularly want you to remember in and out about the skin manifestations and the musculoskeletal system manifestations. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder. So let us start discussing the clinical features. Now when it comes to clinical features, as I have told you, I particularly want you to remember in and out about the skin manifestations and the musculoskeletal system manifestations. Obviously, lupus nephritis to high heat, you are all familiar with that. Okay. Now, before we begin with skin, I just want you to tell you that in the current ACR ULAR classification criteria, there was a new domain created which was not there in the previous SLICC criteria that was about constitutional symptoms because constitutional symptoms are also very, very common and they may contribute towards the diagnosis. So, that is why it was recently introduced. So, remember, one particular complaint that was covered under the constitutional symptoms or the newly introduced domain was fever, right? So, you should be aware about that. Okay. Now, coming to the real area that is skin. Now, when it comes to skin manifestations, we are all already familiar that there are acute lesions, there are subacute lesions and there are chronic lesions. But equally important for us to know is that we can classify the skin lesions into lupus specific and lupus non-specific, right? So, we should be aware about what lesions constitute the specific lesions and what are the lesions which are non-specific that may occur in other uh, rheumatological disorders, right? And this classification into specific and non-specific has a name, Gilliam classification, right? So, be aware about this name also. This can be asked as a question. Like the Gilliam classification is concerning with lupus nephritis or skin lupus or something like that, right? So, be aware about the name, Gilliam classification. Now, what are the specific lesions according to this classification? Acute cutaneous lupus erythematosus, uh, there are two specific localized and generalized forms. Then, subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus, again two specific uh, lesions, annular subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus and papillosquamous subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus. The papillosquamous is also known as psoriasis form lupus erythematosus, right? Because clinically and histopathologically, it resembles psoriasis. Okay. Now, coming to the third one that is chronic cutaneous lupus erythematosus. The very classical example we are all familiar with is the discoid lupus erythematosus. Some of its variants can also be considered under this which are specific like hypertrophic uh, DLE or varicose DLE. Then mucosal uh, uh, discoid lupus erythematosus, mucosal DME. Then we have lupus erythematosus tumidus where there are characteristic lesions which are plaques. Right, erythematous plaques without scales and depigmentation. Now, when we talk about sub subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus, now, so there there is usually scales present. I told you psoriasis form. Right, so there are scaling present. On the other hand, when we talk about the classical discoid lupus erythematosus, there is depigmentation. Right, so in this case, in uh, LE tumidus, neither there is scaling nor there is depigmentation, but there are plaques present for sure. Right. That is what we call as lupus erythematous tumidus. Then we also have chilbane uh, lupus erythematosus, which is nothing but uh, acral lesions, lesions mainly in the acral areas, which are triggered by exposure to cold. Right. So we call them as chilbane lupus erythematosus. And then we also have a condition where there is a lichen planus and DLE overlap. Right. So lichenoid DLE is what we call them. As. So these are all specific. Now what are the non-specific lesions we see? A long list, right? So that includes vasculitic lesions like leukocytoplastic vasculitis or polyarthritis nodosa like vasculitic manifestations, then certain vasculopathies. I think uh, the whole list is not particularly important. Just be aware that there are a lot of non-specific uh, skin lesions, right? Then again, I particularly want you to remember this non-scarring alopecia. So normally when we talk about SLE, we all remember discoid lupus erythematosus scarring alopecia, right? But non-scarring alopecia is equally common or in fact more common. Right? So patients with uh, lupus erythematosus are very much prone to develop telogen effluvium. They are also prone to develop alopecia areata. So there is a strong correlation between alopecia areata and the lupus erythematosus. Right? So telogen effluvium can occur, alopecia areata can occur and there is also something called as lupus hair. So some patients when you look at their frontal hair line, right? so some segment there are varying sized thin hairs present right, in the frontal hairline. That is what we call as lupus hair. 
right so these are all uh, manifestations in the form of non scarring alopecia scarring alopecia is typical story of uh, discoid lupus erythematosus right other than that patients can develop sclerodactyly uh, something similar to scleroderma right they can develop rheumatoid nodules they can develop calcinosis cutis so almost all manifestations that we talk under scleroderma can occur in patients with sle right rheumatoid nodules scleroderma calcinosis cutis certain uh, non specific bullous lesions urticaria then cutis laxa acanthosis nigricans can also occur erythema multiforme leg ulcers and lichen planus these are all non specific dermatological manifestations okay now we know what are specific and what are non specific we should also be aware about one more particular point from the skin that is about the histopathology right 